Hello, Les from Thailand here and today's video is going to be about divorce and my bankruptcy. How I went bankrupt following divorce. Now, I've done many stories on here with regard to divorce, losing my kids. So I've had many, many bad things sort of happen to me during my lifetime. I'm not looking for sympathy of anybody. What I'm trying to show is that to those people who are going through the divorce or having hard times, I've been there. I've been in that deepest, darkest hole and think there's no way out. But now, I live here. My channel is Retired and Living the Dream. And yes, I am retired. And yes, I am living the dream. So to all those people who are going through a hard time at the minute, listen to my stories. There is hope there is light at the end of the tunnel no matter what situation you're in it's just you you have to work through it i'm a positive guy always have been always will be but yes i've been there in that deepest darkest hole so yes i know how you feel how you, what you're going through and that feeling that it's never going to end but believe me it does end and like i say i'm retired and living the dream so follow up my videos. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Leave your comments down below and subscribe would be nice. So here I am again. Time to wash the car and I'll go through my bankruptcy story. So, bankruptcy. What caused me to go bankrupt was divorce. Now, I was married for a number of years and we enjoyed the fruits of my labour. My wife didn't want to work. She wanted to be home watching the kids, which I didn't mind doing that. So I took on extra jobs to be able to satisfy my wife to being able to stop at home and look after the kids. So my job, when I first met my wife, I was a firefighter and that's the only thing I did. But I also knew I wanted to do other things so I've always been a hard worker, provide good provider for my wife and kids, and that never changed. So I decided that I wanted to learn new things, do new things. So whilst we were married, I bought a house, renovated it, built two of my own houses. So we sort of earned a lot of money, but we had a lot of debts as well, because obviously taking on other properties, you, you have mortgages and you have debts and one thing and another. So although I worked hard, I'd sort of four jobs. I was a firefighter, I was an electrician, I was a property developer, and I had my own children's entertainment business. And I did other things, probation officer, or work for the probation service, should I say. And so, I was a workaholic sort of thing. I was working seven days a week, but my view was that when I got to 50, we had maybe six or seven houses and uh, a good retirement because of all of the properties. They would have been finished the mortgage by the time I was 50. And I would have had my fire brigade pension and I would have had my other jobs that I could have done, such as electrician or children's entertainment rental incomes so I look to the future at 50 year old doing all these things unfortunately my wife had other thoughts about that with regard to when she wanted the divorce that sort of put a, an end to everything as far as that was concerned and this is where my story starts for those watching it does have a happy ending at the end of the spoiler alert it does have that be ending. So, when my wife decided she want, wanted the divorce, that sort of blew my world apart. And I'm not going to go into the reasons why, but it was a sad reason why the divorce happened in the first place. But anyway, that, that's another story. But let's just take it that divorce was happening. So therefore, I pleaded with my ex-wife not to divorce because I didn't want to get divorced. I had two, two lovely children and it was sort of anything I could do. But she didn't want to do that. She wanted the divorce. So there's nothing I could do about it. I asked her not to get divorced, but she wanted to get divorced. So as you can imagine, 
having the three houses and the debts and we've just come back off holiday we had a new caravan that was on finance the car was on finance so she wanted me to move out of the house which was impossible because I couldn't afford to pay the rent give her maintenance for her and the kids and pay all the debts and that so I said to her you take over the mortgage payments I'll move out and obviously she says no I'm not going to do that so then long story short the divorce was going on and my dealings with the courts it was going to end up that if I carried on with my other jobs electrician houses and one thing and another the maintenance payments to my ex-wife was going to be astronomical and I thought to myself why should I work hard so she can take the payments and stay at home so it was then I decided no I was just going to be a firefighter I wasn't going to do any other jobs and when the divorce came I landed up with all the debts to keep my pension I was eight years away from retirement so I ended up with all the debts and not none of the house so I'd lost, sort of lost everything and because we were going through the divorce and the payments and one thing and another and I stopped my jobs because I wasn't going to let them be taken into consideration I became in debt with the, with the mortgages, with the loans, everything else car payments fell behind I was instructed to give the car back and then the court said I couldn't give the car back because um, that was under dispute as to how much extra the car was going to cost me. Yeah, long story, but so I was in debt. And during the divorce, which took a couple of years or so, them debts just built up because I wasn't paying them because I knew I wasn't working all the hours that God sent anymore. I was just a firefighter. So during this time, I contacted the citizens advice asking for them to help me out as far as my debts are concerned and they contacted the various companies and sort of told them the situation and that's where I would recommend anybody to do get in touch with the citizens advice bureau you need help at this time if you're in debt and you're going through a divorce and you need all the help you can get so sister's advice said to me you're going to end up with all the debts Les looks like you're going to end up with everything and when I got divorced the debts were at that time £15,000 now this was in 2002 2003 so not a lot of money really but because I hadn't been paying the loans I had a debt problem so therefore I couldn't get a cheap bank loan to pay the £15,000 off it was going to be a high interest rate because of my I was a, a risk now because I hadn't paid the money so my financial advisor said we can get this loan over a 20 year period Les but after 20 years you've got nothing to show for it and she said you've got nothing to lose by going bankrupt because you've got nothing you don't have a car you don't have any assets apart from your pension but they can't touch that until I retire and as long as I don't draw my pension before my bankruptcy finished they couldn't touch it so I sort of still saved my pension by going through bankruptcy unless I drew it within the three years that I was going bankrupt for so she suggested bankruptcy as a way out of, it, of this so being all upset and thinking I've never been in trouble with the, having finance and one thing and another I was very upset and reluctantly took her advice and went through bankruptcy and I went to the courts and it was on my birthday 2003 and I was declared bankrupt 
on that tier and going to the insolvency officer the following week with all my paperwork from the courts I was in tears because I was upset thinking divorced and I was going through fighting with my ex-wife as well for getting access for the kids so that remember that big dark deep hole I was in it and I was going further and further down so everything was against us so I broke down into tears because of my situation going through bankruptcy so out of that was my world and my plans for my future being a, a property owner and businessman and retiring with the wife and the kids and having a happy retirement that was blown out of the water so the lady who dealt with my bankruptcy came over give me a cuddle and she said listen Les she said I know it's not going to make things much better but she said as of today you are 27,000 other people and now my birthday was in July so seven months of the year 27,000 people had gone bankrupt up to that time and I asked her, I says, am I wrong? 27,000 people in England. And she says, no, you're just over the 27,000th person to go bankrupt in England this year. So although it didn't make me feel much better, but I thought, I'm not on my own. There's plenty of other people who are in my situation. Now we try to keep it quiet and say nothing. But for those people who don't know, that's impossible to keep bankruptcy quiet because it goes in the local paper under insolvencies and it goes in your area where you live. So I remember going to work one morning and there was 30 people in the room where I was, changeover of shift. So it couldn't have been at a more public location for my work colleagues and that. And one of the lads off the other shift said, is that right, Les, in front of everybody? Is that right, Les, you've gone bankrupt? Now my face just said it all. I went bright red, embarrassed and um, ashamed because it's out now, people know. And it was sort of one of them moments that everybody stops and look shocked and thinking, bankrupt? We knew it, Les was going through a divorce, but he had houses, he had jobs, he had his own biz two businesses, you know, and of course, I, I didn't tell everybody what was going on, but now the secret was out. And I remember saying this this lad who said it all, who had great joy in telling everybody because obviously it was a big scandal and nobody as far as I knew had gone bankrupt in the fire service before me, I've never heard of it. So I said in front of everybody else, yeah that's correct, that's true, I've gone bankrupt. If anybody wants to know anything, anybody wants to ask questions, ask the questions. I'm not ashamed of it, I said anymore, because now the secret is out. I don't need to be ashamed of it, it's one of them things and I'm here to help anybody that wants to ask any questions and that was the time the weight lifted off my shoulders because the secret was out and there was no shame in doing what I did or what I did do through bankruptcy through divorce it's not as if I wanted to cheat anybody out of any money but the things I learned after bankruptcy and how bankruptcy works, I can understand now why many people go bankrupt. And just a little ditty. Do you know Donald Trump has been bankrupt three, four times? And I remember one person saying to me, you're bankrupt, Les. I said, yeah. And she says, I thought it was only rich people that went bankrupt. No. Anybody can go bankrupt. It cost me, at the time, £300, which I had to pay in cash, to go bankrupt. 
and then all my debts were cleared and as far as bankruptcy is concerned that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because all that stress and strain and all them letters because you will get many many letters from the finance companies threatening to take it to court and threatening letters and intimidating letters and it's awful but they all stop and if they do send you any letters like that or threats you can take them to court for harassment so from the day I went bankrupt I never received another threatening letter and then for the first time in years and years I had all my fire brigade pay for me apart from the maintenance I give my wife and my children I've never been like that for years where I had so much income every month and obviously I wasn't working any other jobs either because if I'd worked at any other jobs then I would have had to pay part of that towards my bankruptcy which was going to last for three years I hope to now that sounds pretty easy bankruptcy but I can tell you it isn't easy at all you lose a normal bank account you just get a very very basic bank account you don't have any credit which was for me was a good thing because I knew then I'd never get into debt again because you can't get debt you can't have a mortgage, you can't have credit cards you just have the money that you live on so for me within three months I'd saved a thousand pounds and I bought my car probably the first car I've had paid cash for it for years and years I always got cars on credit because I was earning a lot of money so we were always having a brand new car every two or three years so I bought my first car for cash for a thousand pounds and I moved up from a crappy little one bedroom flat in not a very nice area to a nicer area so things following bankruptcy actually improved for me I was quite happy and and ironically what happened in the future was that word got around the fire brigade that I'd gone bankrupt so there was a couple of times I'd gone to other fire stations acting as their watch manager and I had people knocking on my station door saying Les can I have a word can I ask you some questions and I said yeah of course you can so other people who were in debt in a similar situation that I was was asking me for advice on how they could clear the debts off and what was bankruptcy really like so I would say in the three or four years following my bankruptcy I was like an advisor telling people what options they had and those people who were in debt who were watching this video there's voluntary arrangements there's financial arrangements that you can make with your creditors and there was I'll give a story about this one gentleman that I knew and he'd set up a, a voluntary agreement and if he missed this voluntary agreement payments then they would make him bankrupt anyway so silly enough that he made the arrangements and he felt guilty about his debts he wanted to pay off as much as he could but it was going to take him 10 years to pay his debts off sort of an impossible situation again he went through a divorce and all crept up on him and he couldn't afford to pay the payments so he came to my office and he asked me what can he do and when I suggested bankruptcy because then that would cure everything finish everything he had no uh, he had nothing at all didn't own his car was totally in debt paying all these maintenance payments and one thing and another blah blah blah, blah. and long story short again with that one he went bankrupt and cleared all his debts off and I've seen him maybe four or five years later and he said Les that's the best advice that anybody ever gave me he said the weight that that took off my shoulder was incredible he said uh, he said yeah I was like you he said felt embarrassed and ashamed about going bankrupt but it sorted his problems out because all of his debts were cleared at that time now I'm not proud that I went bankrupt 
But I didn't go bankrupt because of greed or anything else like that. I went bankrupt because circumstances dictated that that was one of my options that I had. And bearing in mind I've always paid into the system, I didn't sort of feel guilty following my bankruptcy after four or five years because I thought I'm helping people out here who take from society and never ever give back to society drug dealers people on drug habits and there's one person I know I used to deal with his methadone treatment a year was £14,000 that the government paid to pay for his methadone treatment so he didn't go back to heroin, which stopped him from committing crime. £14,000 a year. Incredible. So my £15,000 worth of bankruptcy was nothing in comparison to what some other people take from the system. And there was no help for me at all, you know, as far as housing's concerned or council houses are looking. Because I was working, no. Go and sort yourself out. So my bankruptcy took three years. It took three years. And then I remember getting my discharge letter to say your bankruptcy is finished now. And I can virtually do anything that I want, want to do. I can get other jobs. There was no other payments to pay anybody else. My bankruptcy was over. So after three years you get used to just living on the money that you've got. And then I started my electrical business again, started that back up, started making money from that. And that was my new life, starting all over again. Because I could earn money. I've always been a good worker and I've always been able to earn a lot of money. So bankruptcy isn't all that bad really when all said and done it's an audible option have to take and if there is any other way out of this do it i think back bankruptcy now doesn't last as long as three years i think it's only two years now but don't be afraid of bankruptcy it's a system that is there to help people restart again now i contributed to the system, I paid my taxes, my other jobs that I got, I paid my taxes from that and I'm retired and I get a pension now from, from my fire brigade pension and I pay taxes on that. So as far as I'm concerned, I've had a little bit of help off the system because the system allowed me to go bankrupt and restart my life again. Now there's many people who take their lives because of bankruptcy or debt situation. There's always a way out. Talk to other people with regard to how they manage to get out of their financial situation. The help's there for everybody, no matter where you are in the world. So use the help if you can get it. So, like I say, happy ending. Here I am now, I live in this beautiful country, Thailand. I've been here now for 11 years. And from that deepest, darkest hole, I couldn't see any light at the end of the tunnel either. Everything looked dark, everything looked black. But I'm happy now. I'm married again. I live in a beautiful country. I have a, a wonderful lifestyle. So for those people who are going through hard times, send me an email. I'm an ear to listen to. I'll give you what advice I can. If I can't give you any advice, I'll send you to the people that can help you out. Don't be despaired. Don't be discouraged help is there for everybody so from les living in thailand retired and living the dream until the next video bye for now